The rise of the retail investor has far reaching consequences for the future of the ETF industry. The use of technology, caring more about climate and social concerns, this whole new universe of investors that are being fueled by tech platforms like Acorns and Zingaroo. And in the investment banking world, we're seeing high valuations for these startup and early stage companies that are really solving a need in the marketplace that marries the generational interests and social media with investing. And this retail army, as some call them, opened almost 10 million new brokerage accounts in 2020. And there's now research out there indicating that another almost 8 million new accounts opened in January and February of this year. So those are staggering numbers. And this generation investor, as Charles Schwab calls it, is asking questions and doubting some of the cornerstone theories of our industry and investment strategies that our industry has been built on. And many of the platforms are leveraging AI and machine learning to trade ETFs as well as ETF options. So the implications of product development, marketing, branding, distribution, and how you position your firm are all gonna need to be addressed and prioritized to focus on this growing pool of investors and, and really meet the demands of a truly automated AI powered financial system. So there's really no stopping ETFs given the market cycles we've gone through where ETFs were used for price discovery and or safe harbors. And the fact that the structure or the wrappers of ETFs are changing to accommodate all types of active, we will definitely see growth continue. And obviously the product development teams um, are focused on active fixed income and ESG. There's a lot of talk about that. And there'll be a lot of discussion on that at the conference. However, if we are, are looking at a truly modern industry, we need to look at how we as an industry use blockchain to transform the, the ETF industry. For example, making ETFs trade with same day settlement would be a game changer. There's no need that ETFs have a longer, that ETFs should have a longer settlement cycle. And this would open up so much opportunity. And the other truly big innovation for ETFs is when they're able to handle defined contribution trading and be included in defined contribution plans fully. That will be another game changer. And again, we all know it's coming. I think we all, we all feel it. It's just a matter of when especially con considering the blockchain technology that's available today. Well, ESG is definitely here to stay. And there are four things going on in the markets that are driving this. Number one, the retail investor and the new generations beginning to invest with their social agenda as the foundation. We're gonna see demand in these products and, and demand for products that adhere to some sort of ESG standard really increase. Number two, we're seeing large institutionals, institutional clients changing their investment profile to cater to their beliefs, their missions, their clients, and actually their own ESG ratings. And then simply to think about risk management in a different way. And number three, activist firms are forcing the mega shareholders to make change, like what we saw recently with Engine One, forcing Exxon to change up their board. And finally, with active ETFs being turned on, we're going to see large institutional asset managers launching product. So firms like BNY Mellon, who are massive in the institutional and retail space, getting into the game with sustainable active product. So all of these mega trends will continue to drive assets into ESG products. And the other area that we are going to look in depth in at the conference in September is cryptocurrency, where we know there's a massive opportunity with some researchers are forecasting that inside five years, we're going to see allocations to some sort of crypto anywhere between one to 10% in average portfolio. And this is an asset that people still don't fully understand. So this is definitely an area where there'll be significant growth and we're just starting to see products being stood up like the Bitwise product, which is more of a pure play, but still not actual crypto. And this situation reminds me a lot of GLD actually, which was the first ETF that was backed by actual gold. At first people didn't believe it. They were very skeptical. They didn't understand it. But now we know the GLD and other commodity backed ETFs have been one of the industry's most successful innovations. So these are all such interesting conversations and I'm really looking forward to being back in person with my friends from the ETF industry to discuss all of this in September.